Paro Ninja. G'day everyone, today we're looking at when to use groups or queues in Pardo. In some circumstances, uh, one is more relevant than the other, but it is dependent on the use case. So we'll go through a couple of different scenarios where depending on your strategy and your lead assignment process, you can go with either or. Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to talk about using groups, queues, and lead assignment rules within Pardot and when to use each or specific use cases um, and what to think about when you're choosing because there are many ways to do lots of things in Pardot and Salesforce alike. So, you know, we never sort of put it to you that this is how you need to do something. We like to show things that have worked for us, obviously having done many, many projects in the past and seeing lots of use cases. Um, so these are, these are one of these instances where um, we just want to enlighten anyone that's taken the time to watch this to sort of have a look at, you know, that there are a few different ways to get a prospect over to your sales team. So what we've done is we've created a bunch of um, sort of assets here, including a, a list, a form, a queue, a group, an engagement program. We're not going to take time on how we built those. We have got other um, content series that, that cover all of those. We're going to talk about the idea around groups and queues. So firstly, let's talk about the difference between a group and a queue. So to find uh, groups in the part of Lightning app, you go to settings and then you jump into your groups here under user management. It's very easy to create a group. And then once you go, go in, you can uh, see which users a part of this group. Now at the moment, obviously there are no users that are part of the group. So we can go into, let's say my user for instance, and you would have seen um, back here, if I had slowed down, that we can edit the groups that I'm in straight from here, just a checkbox, bang. And then we know that my user is in this group. So there you go. So you can you can edit the uh, the users within each particular group. Now, um, a group is used in different scenarios, but essentially what it does is it allows you to, let's say someone submits a form, you can then assign them to a group, which will mean that it'll assign to each member in that group in a round robin fashion, so that the leads are evenly distributed. Now that can work really well when you've got a team that are uh, specifically focused on an industry or a product or a region where you want them to, um, you know, what you want just those people to 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 get those those leads. The thing to watch out with, watch out for with groups is because it's going to assign by round robin that assignment strategy, the technology behind it, isn't gonna know if that person is in for that day. So if you've got really time sensitive leads, groups probably aren't the way to go for you. It's probably more for like a B2B, longer sales cycle, territory management type setup where groups can work really well. So within, uh, within a particular form, so we've set up our form here, you can, um, in the completion actions, you can just add. So you got assigned to group, and then you just choose whichever group you want and go ahead and save. And then in that instance, it'll go to that group. Now, when we go into the engagement program, I'll show you some use cases where you might want to um, use it there. But in this case, um, groups uh, can work in that instance for a, for a completion action. Another way that works quite well um, is, and we'll just focus on the completion actions after a form submitted, is assigning someone to a queue. So very similarly, well, let's let's just have a quick 
uh, look into uh, queue creation. So obviously the queue in part or is just simply syncing to the one that's created in Salesforce. So you want to speak to your Salesforce admin if that's not you on creating a queue on the, on the Salesforce side. And then to get there, you go into user management, users, and then you'll see view queues here. And you see we've created one. So just add, to create one, you just add it, and then you pick the one that's available, the one that's relevant for you. So if we go back to the form, you know, we've got our one queue ready to go. So in this instance, a queue can be used in many ways. Now, you might have, if, you, if you've watched a few of our videos, might have seen us talking about Omnichannel before. Omnichannel essentially automatically routes leads to the best suited people and the most available people in your team. And why that's good is because the problem that I mentioned with the groups won't happen here where um, the someone that's not there isn't going to get the lead because they have to actively accept it. Now, that's when you're using it with Omnichannel. The other way to use it is you just assign directly to the queue and then it sits in that queue for either a manager to assign to someone or you have a group of people that have access to that queue and they can just jump in and grab the leads that they need to work on on that day. Obviously, it's completely dependent on what your strategy is like, what your lead management process is like, but that's another really nice way to, to manage your leads and get into the sales team in the way that they want them. The final way when it comes to completion actions is assigning via a Salesforce active assignment rule. Now, again, if you're not the Salesforce admin, you will need help from, from your Salesforce admin on this one. And this is a really powerful one, um, especially when you want Salesforce to be doing a lot of the um, grunt work instead of instead of part on. And what I mean by that is, you can um, you can you can actually get um, Salesforce to to have a bunch of logic that it goes through, um, such as you know it might be postcode based, where you'd want it to to see any postcode range between here and here, assign it to this queue or assign it to this person. Um, you know, it might be state-based, it might be product-based, whatever it might be, all of that logic can get done in Salesforce. So it means that Pardot is not working as hard. So that's a, that's a really popular option as well. So all of these three options can also be done in an engagement program. So if we use this engagement program as, a, as, a, as an example, what we've got running here is the first thing that it checks for, and this is this is from another um, episode that we've done earlier, it checks to see if they're a lead or a contact already. If they are, they just notify the assigned user. If they're not, what we want to do here now is when we go into build mode, is we want to be changing this to, and you might want to change, you might, you might just have one person in your business looks after sales, so you can keep it like that. But if you've got multiple, you can assign to a group and then select that group. You can assign to a Salesforce queue and select the ones that you've configured. Exactly the same theory as what I showed you um, with the completion actions, but it's just getting done in the engagement program. And then you can assign via a Salesforce active assignment rule. Now. You might be thinking, you know, what's the point in doing it in here if you could do it in the form? So some businesses like to sort of make decisions. So put a rule in here and they might say, you know, what's the, I gave the example of the state before, right? So if the state, you know, if we've actually gotten the state field, so if it's not empty, then we want to assign via active assignment rules because we're going to know that that stay information will be able to be used by the assignment rules and it'll get to the right place. Otherwise, if that if not, you might want to assign it via, 
you know, a catch-all queue or, or some other instance. So these are the type of scenarios where you might want to, you know, you might, you might look at using an engagement program for it if you've got some other steps that you want to take versus completion actions. So just to summarize, Groups are great for even distributions to teams, especially if they're broken up by industry or product or region. But the downside is that, you know, if you need fast turnaround on leads, someone that's not there that day may be allocated leads. The queue option, you can get um, leads directly into a queue where can, they can then automatically be assigned via Omnichannel which means that only people that are available and ready and well suited will get the lead. Or you can have it like a free for all where, probably not a free for all, but uh, particular people um, that are suited to that queue can then go in and, and grab their own leads or it's assigned by a manager. And then you've got the active lead assignment rules where Salesforce is doing the grunt work in terms of deciding where that lead should go as opposed to part of. I hope you got some value from from this. Please feel free to reach out if you've got any questions. Thank you again. Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. We hope you got a lot of value out of it. Please don't forget to subscribe and engage with the content because a lot of it is driven by you guys, the user. So we need to know your feedback. Cheers.